Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00 and an update on Project Mjolnir. I know it's been a long time in coming and I apologize for the delay there. Really, really quick breakdown on why things have been radio silent uh, for quite a while. Towards the latter end of last year, uh, a lot of things happened in, in my private life which kind of ground a lot of things uh, to a halt. Uh, so the property we were renting at the time, the landlord decided they want to sell up um, and just kind of snatch the property out from beneath us, which isn't ideal. So any any work on on Project Mjolnir, Project ODST kind of ground to a halt and the priority was real life. Uh, so unfortunately, so particularly the, the last kind of three months of last year, very little was being done uh, in regards to Project Mjolnir, along with the fact that I had a lot of events on as well. So I, I, I went over to, uh, to HCS in Seattle. Uh, I was planning to go to, uh, to the Halo Europa event in Blackpool, but we had car trouble, so I need to get a new car as well. Uh, and then, um, and then we had the, the sponsorship uh, with uh, with Paramount Plus, who sent me out to Sao Paulo for the announcement of season two of the Halo TV show. So, a lot of things were happening towards the end of last year, and it meant that Project Mjolnir and Project ODST unfortunately had to take a backseat. Now we're in the new property. The kind of the first quarter of, of 2024 is more or less out of the way. Uh, we're settled in, and and work has begun once again. We're back in hardware mode, which is great. So I wanted to give you kind of a breakdown on kind of where we are, what has been happening, what is happening, what we're planning on doing, and then <clears throat> the big the big reveal. So all in all, progress so far, we've we've been we've been doing this project now for sort of four four years, I think now. About four years since I announced it. First year really was kind of fleshing things out, getting traction and just kind of finding a, the, the right direction to go in and, and where to start. Uh, we very rapidly attracted the right people to the to the project, and progress rapidly accelerated. Uh, ultimately, culminating in uh, kind of the big thing of last year being the confirmed announcement that the the actual real Mjolnir helmet had been completed. Now, by real Mjolnir helmet, if for those of you who might be new to this, or you know, just as a reminder, by by real, I mean as real as it is practically possible with modern day technology, as law accurate as possible. So. The helmet back there has an outer shell of titanium, it has an inner frame made of aircraft grade aluminium, along with a built-in heads-up display, complements of the HoloLens 2 from Microsoft, uh, and it has a full helmet suite including cooling systems, communication systems, both internal and external communication systems, a binaural auditory system to allow you true sort of stereo surround sound so to speak, so you can hear outside of the helmet and localise sound. Uh, along with really high powered torches uh, and a communications array that allows all of those systems to be controlled both from the heads up display and external control units. So it is as close to a real Mjolnir helmet as is practically possible. We already have plans to innovate on the version 1 helmet and upgrade it to make a version 2 helmet which is a significant upgrade to the version 1 but we'll get to that in just a minute. And at the same time that we were developing the helmet we also developed the heating and cooling system vest which allows uh, liquid to be circulated through a cooling vest to cool the body down, as well as having carbon fiber heating pads to better heat the body up. And that was all informed by research as how to best heat and cool the body. They were kind of the main big developments, uh, although at the very latter end of last year, I did make the announcement that the exoframe leg up there on the, on the cube storage there had been completed. The, the exoframe uh, is, is the beginning of the actual quote unquote powered part of the armor. Uh, so I have one of those, Maker has one as well, and we've both begun comparing and contrasting its functionality. We're in the midst of being able to refine that design and slim it up and really start making developments in the right direction with that. So that's what has been going on. What is going on at the moment is uh, we're, we're back in hardware mode, so we're starting to produce electronics and software again in regards to Project Mjolnir and Project ODST. The big things to kind of write home about are that we are taking the systems that were inside of the Mjolnir helmet, for the version 1 helmet that is, and reverse engineering them to make the systems therein commercially available. That was a big ethos of Project Mjolnir when we first set out to do things. So what we are doing, as you can tell from me having a Morrigan helmet, sat just here, is, um, is we're taking all the electronic systems that were in the version 1 helmet, we're slimming them up, we're, we're refining them, and we're reverse engineering them, and basically making packs that enable cosplayers primarily to upgrade 
their helmets to have the same systems within them that we have with the version 1 Mjolnir helmet. So they will have active cooling systems, they'll have uh, torches that can be turned on and off wirelessly, they'll have internal communication systems, external communication systems, binaural auditory systems, as well as immersive HUD lines, and we're tentatively already looking towards a, a, a lighter version of the heads-up display systems. So all of that is being reverse engineered and will eventually be made publicly available. So I'm really excited about that particular aspect of the project as well. We've also been working with a few people external to the materials group on developing systems for the weapons, like so smart scope systems, for example, active targeting systems that will all work with the heads-up display systems that we've developed, along with a more accurate way to monitor ammunition count and not have some of the fundamental flaws that are prevalent in some of the other ammo counting systems that have been developed thus far. And we're beginning work on the proprioception frame, which is a method of being able to track the body in real time in space and know the exact positions of the respective parts of the limbs mainly for the purposes of the robotic systems to then be able to take executive control over the movement of the armor itself in a degree of power assist one to kind of carry the armor's own weight but also to give a very modest strength boost so the big things that we're doing next are we are developing the version 2 Mjolnir helmet which is a stark improvement on the design parameters of the version 1 helmet uh, there's going to be some innovations that we're putting into that, that that gain us some functionalities that we unfortunately missed the first time around, but that we will absolutely and utterly address in the version 2. It also serves to make the helmet more modular. We can, we can change things out and swap things out much faster without having to kind of go right the way back to the drawing board and, and start the process all over again. So that's going to be a big step in the right direction it's basically the concept at the moment that we're working with is basically a helmet within a helmet but i'll flesh more information out about that when i give you the kind of the big update on the version 2 helmet uh, and the next big plans really we want to do some ballistic testings for the titanium armor itself so we want to make replica titanium plates of the pectoral armor of master chief and actually get them shot at so we've had some very brief conversations with the guys over at impact props uh, the guys who have been uh, testing the, the real-life Halo weapons, which has been awesome to watch from my perspective. Uh, and there are tentative plans to have a collaboration with them and actually get an, a real armor plate ballistic tested. That will be quite fun. And I'd, I'm going to tentatively, tentatively put it out there that I would like to perhaps reach out to Demolition Ranch to get him to fire everything up to and including his, his 50 cal rifle at a one-to-one -one replica of the of the pectoral plate of Mjolnir because I just think that would be awesome to see. So that's kind of what's planned for this coming year. Um, before I move on, uh, Project ODST. ODST has kind of slowed down. It slowed down as, as, as part of the, everything that was happening at the end of last year, but we're picking it back up again. We've already um, developed and acquired some really high-quality uh, models that we can work off of and, and engineer and, and, and work with to optimize the design parameters that we're going for with the ODST project. So what we got planned for initially the, the ODST helmet and what we're gonna reveal there is worlds apart from anything else you've seen so far. So stay tuned for that as well. Uh, that kind of broadly speaking is what has been what's going on, uh, what is happening at the moment and what will be happening in the coming year. Um, and I'm really happy with where we are with things. So all in all, that's a broad breakdown of, of what's been happening with Project Mjolnir. Again, my apologies that it's been radio silent for as long as it has been, uh, but thank you to everyone who has supported the project, continues to support the project, um, both on Patreon, uh, for the Materials Group Patreon, and on the GoFundMe. Again, links for all that is down below, as well as the people who've been buying like Mjolnir, uh, Project Mjolnir t-shirts over on Teespring. Again, all the profits of that go straight into the project. Without you guys, this just wouldn't be possible. And I thank you if you've just if, if you've passively helped by watching the videos, subscribing, liking the videos, and sharing them around. All of it helps, and it helps get the project out to more people, gets more attention, and ultimately allows us to do more. And another big thank you to all of our sponsors so far that have jumped aboard to help develop Project Mjolnir and Project ODST respectively, uh, and get the project as a whole to where it is at the moment. That's kind of where we are, but... Um, I'm sure there's there's something else I could um I could showcase. Okay, okay. Why'd you have to make it weird? I'm gonna move you over to this camera. This 
is the completed Spartan BDU, taking heavy inspiration from the Gen 2 platform Spartan BDU. You'll probably recognize a lot of the features here as being something that's like sort of from Spartan Ops. It's that kind of style. It's also taking some heavy inspirations from some of the early concept art for the, the BDUs as well as uh, the Halo Infinite Gen 3 BDUs, as well as some very loose inspirations from the BDUs that we saw in um, the Fall of Reach animated movie. Uh, all in all, the development process, this has been being developed since very early on in the process of Project Mjolnir. Uh, it was one of the first things that I was, it was in my head that needed to be done first. I liked the idea of working kind of from the inside out uh, because it was, in my mind, it was easy to start with the inner components because they were more achievable more quickly and then work outwards as it is we've, we've changed a little bit from that design methodology. In the grand scheme of things though, like I say, it's been in development for all of that duration of time um, and the results are very self-evident. To kind of give you a breakdown, kind of working from the outside in, so we have these hard mounting points that are in locations here. We're gonna, um, we're gonna adjust these to have uh, magnetic couplers and we might even upgrade them to be titanium as well. Uh, that will enable it to be kind of located into the, the next layer um, and not move around too much independent of well, me, so to speak, it, it kind of anchors me into the larger suit as a whole. Uh, the black hard points here um, allow some degree, well, they're, they're allow flexibility. I can move around, but there's some degree of structural limitation to avoid hyperextension. So, for example, you can't go too high up this way. You've got to come up and around to get up above your head. That's not unlike some of the characteristics that we saw with Mjolnir itself. Um, the hard parts themselves are a foamed polyurethane rubber, mainly for padding and protection, uh, but again, allows some degree of structural limitation. That includes uh, the spine armor as well, which also acts as the primary conduit for a lot of the electronics and things like that that are, are fed through the suit. We'll get onto that in a minute. Then uh, you can see we have cer certain feature points here, which are kind of harder padded areas to protect. Um, from the, the, the contact and interface points between this and the next layer out from this. Uh, again, that just kind of adds comfort for the wearer. For me, uh, protects the body from sort of abrasions, pinch points and things like that. Um, the material itself is, as I recall, is a, f um, again, I'm not great with textiles. This is why I subcontracted it or, you know, uh, sort external contractors. Uh, the material is a four dimensional stretch fabric as I recall, so it's very it's very soft, it's very like soft to the touch, it feels almost like nylon spandex kind of material, but it's not. So it's very soft, it's very flexible, it moves with me and, and it expands and contracts as it needs to. Uh, it's very breathable, so even even now on, on a relatively warm day here on, in the UK and with the window closed, um, and I'm pretty sure the heating is on. Yes it is. Um, I'm, I'm not particularly hot, I'm not over overheating in this, so it's a very breathable suit. So that you've got this the, the, the soft material on the outside, we've got a padding layer in between and then another blue material on the inside. Going deeper again, so beneath that we have various heating elements um, as part of the extended peripheral systems for the, the heating and cooling systems. So for example, if I can just unzip that a little bit. So in the, there you go, you can just see it there. So that's, um, there you go. <laughs> the white pad there. So that is a carbon fiber heating pad that are, I've got more here, there you go. So that's a carbon fiber heating pad and that's positioned in here on both sides and feeds cables up and round to the back here. Um, along with, we've also got carbon fiber heating insoles as well that go down into the boots. This is again based on the early research that I've discussed in previous videos where it was found that you can dump more body heat and regulate temperature more efficiently if you put points of heating or cooling onto parts of the body that almost entirely lack body hair. Uh, they're really good surfaces for, uh, for dumping heat from the body into the medium or taking heat on to warm the body. So we chose, again, soles of the feet. They're bold, there's no hair on the soles of your feet. Um, inside of the wrists, you could also do the palms in theory. We could put these, these same pads inside of the gloves that would go over these, as well as plans down the line once we start developing sort of the outer systems to implement cooling blocks and things onto the back of the hand, actually in the hand armor itself to again allow for like heat dumping into the into the materials and allow for the cooling of, um, of, the, ex of the extremities. Uh, on the subject of cooling the extremities, so this suit actually has um, 
so up beneath that again we have the heating and cooling system which again I think I've, I've showcased in some earlier videos which is like a, a vest with tubing which I believe you can kind of see somewhat through yeah sort of around around here you can see some of the the tubing that goes through the heating and cooling vest inside that allows a cooled liquid medium we're probably going to use an alcohol to be moved through the torso to keep me cool and well thermally regulated we can use uh, these which are basically cooling shoulder nacelles we have two of them so they'll be positioned over the shoulders onto a kind of a custom rack mount that will obviously interface with the hard points back here uh, and that allows a liquid medium, like I say, probably alcohol, to be circulated throughout the uh, throughout the suit. Uh, it chills the alcohol to around 15 degrees centigrade, so it is literally like, like good air conditioning, uh, and that helps keep me cool and then dumps the heat that it picks up from my body into the uh, the, the fans and radiators and, and exchangers inside of the, the shoulder nacelles. So that allows cooling. The vest itself also has carbon fiber heating pads stitched throughout the torso itself that warm the body to 40 degrees centigrade and of course that is enforced and offset by the fact that we've got the insoles and, and the pads in the wrists here. That means that uh, we can cool the core of the body and if you cool the core of the body then the cooled blood then circulates through the extremities. Again we still might augment that with the idea of the, of the cooling blocks on the palms or on the back of the hands just to add a little another layer of cooling and I'm not I'm not entirely ruling out the possibility of revisiting the, the way in which we're doing the heating and cooling system entirely uh, and, and kind of re-optimizing it and, and making it more efficient, but as it is, it's relatively efficient as it is anyway. And then beneath that again, I'm wearing a nylon spandex mix kind of stretchy base layer which has an array of sensors uh, stitched into it. Oh, before we, before we get there, actually, before we move on, there's Kevlar also stitched into the torso of this. Uh, which provides again a de another degree of protection. I think it's three layers of Kevlar across the torso area, some on the abs and then around the back and the, and, and the, and the sides here. That again, three layers helps with some degree of, of like stab proofing and, and, and protection like that. Going back to the, uh, the stretch layer that's inside, we have an array of sensors that have been positioned throughout uh, the, 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 the nylon spandex mix. So we have, I'm not sure these will pick it up, but these are very small, there's two there very small thermal sensors. So these are positioned throughout the inner suit. That's positioned, uh, so it's positioned on the extremities, so on the back of the wrist on both, uh, down in the legs. And then I have various ones positioned on my torso as well around center of mass. They all pick up different temperature gradients from their respective locations and all feed them through uh, micro wires into the spine here where it's picked up by a microcontroller and, and, and then that can be fed out to a microcomputer which takes control of where to distribute heat or cooling. We also have an absolute pressure sensor that's been uh, put in behind some of this paneling here. So again, that detects if the pressure suddenly drops, it can send the information through to the systems to seal down environment systems. That's again, something we're working on down the line. And we have very similar to uh, the smartwatches and things like that, that you get. We have these tiny heart monitor, blood oxygenation level uh, sensors that we have again, positioned in the wrists uh, to pick up blood oxygenation. Uh, and heart rate again all feeds through to the the conduit in the spine all feeds through to the microcontroller which again feeds through eventually to the microcomputer and that can be displayed ad hoc onto the hud of the final uh, the finalized Mjolnir helmet which is still sat proudly still heavy as hell still sat proudly here again there's a version two of the helmet coming but all in all this is the BDU and I'm extremely, I'm extremely pleased with it. I'm extremely pleased with it. I will be showcasing this at live events over over the next year and a bit. So I will be at uh, the HCS London event here in the UK. I'm fortunate I, I have to miss the uh, the HCS World Seattle event this year. So I won't be there, but I will be there hopefully next year. Um, and there's a few other events I've got on my radar that I want to turn up to. So I will, I will be appearing at venues wearing the real Spartan BDU. And yeah, I'm, I, all in all, this is this is cool. I like this. This is it fits nicely. It looks cool. I'm happy. 
and I want to hear your thoughts. What do you think? So, all in all, you're relatively caught up with Project Mjolnir, what we've been getting up to. I know it's been radio sign up quite a while. Again, I apologise for that. There's been a lot of things going on, both in our private lives and, and just in general, that have slowed things down or have meant that they ask, think some things about to go onto the back burner. But we're back in hardware mode. We're back in full production. And you're seeing some of the results of, of, of hard-earned work. This is, like I say, this is nearly three years uh, in, in the making for the BDU uh, specifically. Uh, along with the fact that we've got the beast of the helmet back there, we've got a version 2 coming and we're already reverse engineering a lot of the systems that went into the version 1 helmet for things like cosplay. So loads of things going on there. We've also got the exo frame over here and uh, the maker has made his own exo frames as well and we're both comparing and contrasting kind of feedback and information while we refine the design, slim things up and, and optimize things so we can start searching ahead with the actual exo frame of the suit itself. Um, as far as soft materials are concerned, the next big thing to be looking at is uh, the, the, the Under Armour itself, the softer Under Armour. Uh, so we'll be looking at, um, at, at trying to figure out the, the functionalities that we need to put into that undersuit while also still honouring as close as practically possible uh, the, the functionality within the context of the law but with real life modern day technology. All in all, work continues. Uh, it's, it's a steady, gradual process. I have to thank every single one of you who have watched this video, who have liked, who have subscribed, who have shared, um, and who have gone across to either the, uh, the Materials Group Patreon and support us every month uh, there, or to people who have gone across to the GoFundMe uh, and helped support the project over there. It's because of you guys that this, this is even possible, and I can't thank you enough. I have to say a huge thank you to everyone who has supported the project so far. Uh, to everyone who uh, continues to donate on the GoFundMe, uh, who has supported us on the Materials Group Patreon, who has watched the video, who has liked, subscribed, shared the video, and who continues to support the endeavours of Project Mjolnir and Project ODST. We, we couldn't do any of this without you. Uh, and I, I just have to say thank you. I can't say thank you enough. Thank you. Remember, links to all of the major things in regards to Project Mjolnir and, our, and ways to support and things like that, they're all linked down below. Thanks again for, for, for supporting us while we're getting this done and, to, and for bearing with us while we've had this, this, this prolonged radio silence and expect more updates in the very near future. Take it easy, everyone, and find peace in the domain. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider smashing the like button and leave a comment below on what you'd like me to cover next. Big shout out to my patrons, Spartan10148, the Metarch of my installation, Falcon, Prophet Bear, Mikhail, Sophia, and Ashley, my dutiful monitors, Darian, Scarab, Spartan0137, Anthony, Ghost, Aaron, Chris, Jacob, Sean, Element Zero, Somatic, Jordan J3, Dan, Mr. Keys, Directal, Gunslinger, Jacob, Bandmill, Echo, Evermore, Officer Cat, and Personal Devil, my diligent sub monitors, my fleet of Strato Sentinels, and my loyal enforcers and all the other patrons who have jumped aboard to support the channel. It means more to me than I can accurately put into words. Another shout out to my Tier Zero Transcendent YouTube members, Spartan137, Jacob, Schmitty, Talia, Fenrir, and Born Stella, and all the other YouTube members keeping my installation running on that glorious vacuum energy. Shout out to John for, I don't fucking know. And if you want more of this kind of content, hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you don't miss any future videos, and consider jumping aboard yourself as a patron or YouTube member to keep the channel alive and kicking. Thanks again for watching, Take it easy, everyone, and find peace in the domain.